Hi everyone, Mira here, Adventure Chola Gal. Today, let's talk about fake J versus real J, and how can we tell if it's real or fake, right? If you like this kind of topic, I'm working on a course to help you identify fake J and real J, specifically for people that who are looking to buy online. But right now, you feel really confused, and there's so many information out there. You don't know which vendor to buy from, and you are very nervous about your upcoming purchase, whether it's for yourself or if you are a J lover or you are a collector, or if you buy it for somebody that loves J. Like I have a client that is buying a birthday gift for her mom that is turning 90 years old very soon. So it's a big milestone, and she want to make sure that she get great AJ that is within her budget and what she is looking for in terms of quality, right? So if you are a J lover, J collector, that you are not sure about your upcoming purchase, how to identify J. I am uh, putting together this course that will help you do just that, help you identify the J, identify the seller, what you should look for before the purchase, and what you should do after the purchase. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to put the link in the description. So subscribe to that list. It's going to be an early bird list. And then we can take you go from there and help you identify uh, real J. So at the end of the course, you're going to be very comfortable identify the right kind of J uh, for yourself or for your loved one. It also help you identify what preferences you want in terms of quality. Is color more important to you or texture is more important or translucent? Can help guide you with an estimated worth of the piece that you're looking at to give you some base guideline, right? So if you're interested in that, do go to the comment section and then sign up for the early bird list. So we're going to do that course very soon. So without further ado, let's go into the topic of this video, which is how to identify real J and fake J, right? So this is going to be more an introduction. So J is a stone, right? It's a type of mineral stone that usually has a variety of color. The primary color that you usually see is green. So green can come in many different colors. So this is more like an apple green. And imperial green is definitely way more expensive because that's the most desirable color. And also other color that are also desirable like lavender or like a mix between apple green and lavender that is also popular. White is getting popular and usually they call it some, some type of like landscape, like you know, like the J that have some kind of score of color in there that make it look like a landscape painting. So that is also popular these days. So you want to be able to identify real J from fake J, right? So let me just get it out the way. The only sure way that you be able to do that is through certification. And you can do that with reputable labs like uh, GIA or Mason K or there's some reputable lab in Asia as well and other part of the country, but you know, we are more familiar with those area. So that is the only sure way that you're able to get 100% certified J, right? When it's certified, come with a certificate. But if there is no certificate available, right? Because certification is expensive. Then to able to distinguish real J and fake J, first we got to understand what J is, right? And then what fake J is, right? So let's talk about the fake J, what they are, right? So usually people use the term fake J's to describe type of uh, J looking jewelry or item that may look like J with similar color or similar look, but they don't possess the intrinsic value of J. These imitations are often created from glass, resin, or even stimulated material. Or it could be real J, but it was treated. Could be they could put color in it, they could bleach it and then put color on it. So there are a lot of treatments to make 
natural jade look nice but in a collector world it is still considered a fake jade right because they don't increase in value the value diminishes over time they are not having the desirable quality of jade jewelry like they break easily compared to regular like say a grade 8 uh, bangle pretty hard to break it would pretty hard to make a dent to it so let's talk about those three things the first fake J is uh, stimulated J, right? So what are they? So stimulated J, some type of material, could be natural stone that would dye and treat it to make it look like J. So this is different than from the other type of stone that could be mistaken as J because especially like say adventurine that looks very similar to J. But if you know what to look for, you can see the difference. But if you see it from afar or from a picture that was pretty blurry that you cannot like zoom in, so you might mistake adventuring for a J. So that is different, right? I'm not I'm not talking about that. So I'm talking like stimulated J is uh, kind of like fake fake material, not like other stone that might look like J that we might be mistaking as, as J. So the second uh, fake J's category th that we want to talk about is the composite J. So that could be a mixture of natural J like grind into powder and then they make it into the mold, bind it together or it would mix with some other material and then with some other color to make into a piece of J jewelry but that composite is not real, real J. And the third one that we want to talk about is the dyed or treated J, right? So if it's completely natural, untreated, that's grade A. So grade A doesn't mean that usually we think about A, B, C, we think all oh, A is the best, right? Yeah, A is best in the sense, but it doesn't mean that grade A is the best in quality because Grade A, that the the quality range is still very vast, very different, and the price is still very different, right? Like huge differences. So that's Grade A, uh, natural, untreated, and then we have Grade B, C, D. Uh, but usually the B and the C are the one that are treated and also uh, impregnated with uh, polymer. So it could be glow in the dark that some of the way that you can distinguish no type of fake J. So a lot of the seller would can still call them natural J because they still natural, right? So they usually take J that are very low in quality, bad texture, very bad color, and then they bleach it and then impregnate it with polygrammer resin, you know, to make it look nicer. Basically boil in acid. That's what it is when they when they bleach it, they, they boil in acid and then they coat it, they cook it in polygrammer mixture. So, and then J is porous, right? So when they put it, they cook it in acid, it destroyed the crystal structure inside. That's allowed the polygrammer to go inside the J piece and impregnate it and then make it look nice, but it's very easy to break, like we said before. So it doesn't have really whole value at all, right? So you now you see kind of like the three broad category of fake J, like the uh, stimulated J, the composite J, and the, tr the treated J. So how do you distinguish between fake J and real J? So the first thing you can do is by visual inspection. So visual inspection could be online where you look at photos of items for sale, or it could be in person. So the first thing when you look at, you can look at the color because J usually have a very natural kind of like a soft gray color, but it's, it's a variety of ranges and Mason K put together a beautiful J color chart that I'm going to show here in this video for you briefly. So you can see it's coming in many different colors, but be aware of color that look too good especially when the color is too good and the price is too good, right? So the color, like usually the vendor would advertise it as natural J's and natural J bangle. 
they doesn't say what grade A B C, uh, but they just say it's natural, which you know that's not illegal to do because it's natural even if it's treated. And then the color would be very vibrant. It could look like a bangle that if you have bought it in a grade A bangle, it could be like a hundred thousand dollars. Or you know, in that range, that price range, and they are selling for a couple hundred dollars, right? So you look at, at the color, and if the color is really, really bright, so I'm showing here a couple of really brightly color. If you look at J pieces enough, you kind of get the feeling that it's look kind of unnatural to you, right? It's it's too bright, it's too high in color, especially. The lavender color is very easy to distinguish. Like the green is a little bit harder, but you can see it's like it's bright green, right? So the first thing you look at is color, and the second visual inspection you can do is you're looking at the texture, because J is porous, right? So you look at it, the J bangle, even if you look at in regular light. It look very smooth. The texture looks very smooth. Like you don't see a lot of lines or anything in there. But if you look it under a very strong sunlight, so you can hold it up under the sunlight like this, or like a very bright light, or you have like really bright flashlight. Yeah, so you can put it in the uh, the, the J item, the bangles. So you can see through because for J is. You're supposed to be able to see through. There was some transparency to it, so it's allowed light to go through. As you know, like onyx, like an, another stone that can be easily mistaken for black jade onyx. It's very thick. It's very like when you even shine a light on it, you cannot see through it. So you can see the difference, right? So jade is porous. So when you hold it up in a strong light and a strong sunlight, you actually can see the crystal structure. Right, so that's how the texture is allowing you to identify if it could be real J. So even if it's it's gray A B C, right, it it still have that crystal structure. But if it's really bad quality C gray compared to real A gray, then then you could see the difference. But at least from the texture standpoint, you can see the texture through very strong light, and you do see through it even if it's quite thick. It doesn't have a lot of the texture. It is uh, very fine and thick, so you can really see through a lot. But at least it's see through. It's not like some kind of very dense stone like on it. So you can tell the difference. So you look through that, and then uh, you know if it's a glass bangle, right? Glass. If you look at a glass, glass or a glass cup or something like that, a ball. So usually, if you see any kind of tiny bubble inside a glass, or oh, that's glass, it's definitely not J, right? So J, you don't have that kind of bubble in there. So you're gonna see the crystal structure, but you're not gonna see all that bubble. So it kind of tell you the texture, kind of tell you a little bit. At least you're gonna know if it's potentially could be J or not, right? And then you should be able to distinguish it from glass. Even if with very fine, uh, very translucent pieces, right? You can see this. You can still see the crystal structure. Put it under the strong light. So that what more of the translucency aspect, and then texture for J. Usually they are really polished. So when they polish, like a bangle or like a piece of jewelry, very smooth. It doesn't have like the rough edges. Usually, it it shines pretty well, so that can tell you a little bit if it's J or if it could be something like okay, J is still a stone, right? So you look at the stone and you look at coral, so you can somewhat tell the difference, right? Even if when you first look at a faraway picture, you might think a coral earring is look like. J like orange right J earring, but if you look closely at the texture, right, so you can tell like the smoothness and the shininess of the J texture are very different from kind of a more dull, a more not as polished, not as waterish texture. You know, look say on the coral, right? So it gives you a little bit of an indicator there to look at the texture. So we look at color, translucency, texture, translucency, texture, kind of go together. And the last thing is we're looking at inclusion, right? 
look at imperfections because jay is still a stone and it's formed through million and million of years underground so there still might be some kind of imperfection in the piece if there is no imperfection it could be that it's such a high quality that it's so hard to see even if you look at under strong bright light and you still don't see or it could be some kind of fake material it could be glass it could be something right because with those there's nothing get mixed in there right but if there's something like mixed in there something that feel like it was an inclusion like a natural imperfections so it could be J so it's give you a little bit of an indicator there. So we talk about four different ways for uh, visual inspection. So another way that we want to look at J is look at the physical property of J. So J is very hard. It's very hard on like 6.5 to about 7 on a more scale. So it's harder than steel actually. And it's harder than a lot of material, a lot of different metal as well. So usually with a J piece, you can try to maybe find like if you see, if you have like a, a piece jewelry and it might have a little uh, scratches already, right? So you can try to feel it with your finger, like your fingernail. Can you feel the, the scratch? And then you can try to use like a small needle if you're not afraid of affecting your jewelry, right? So you can try to prick at that area a little bit to see if anything come out because if it's real J, most likely your your needle is not going to make it worse. Or you can you try to scratch like the inside or wherever you can hide it easily. Try to scratch it with the needle. And if it doesn't scratch at all, then more likely it's a hot stone. So it's more, it's more likely it could be J, yeah. But if it's easily uh, Bristol, you know, you can take something out. So it could be composite or it could be something. And you think about it, like, this is going to be hard to distinguish glass with it. Like, you know, think about it. Glass is pretty hard too. Regular metal not going to be able to scratch it. Like, imagine you're trying to scratch like a beer bottle with your knife, right? You, you need a very strong, like, uh, I can't remember, like, specific type of harness in the steel knife for even to be able to scratch the glass. So that is uh, one way of physical, right? So you, you're trying to look at the hardness of the piece. Second way that you want to test the physical aspect of the J jewelry, so what you do is density. So you can try to compare the density of J, but that test is a little bit more complicated. A lot of people use the water test so we could uh, try to do that in another the video, but you know you have an option to try to test the uh, density of the, the J. So we went through visual, we went through physical, and then now let's talk about temperature, right? J is a stone, and it's pretty cold to the touch. So this is also a J earring. So you can try to feel different material. So with your hand, it's harder, but usually depend on the person, but chick is usually pretty sensitive. So usually I would do like a simple touch, but I've been wearing this one for a while. So it kind of gets some of my uh, temperature. So it's a little bit warmer than necessary, but you can leave it aside and then test it in a little bit later. So it's potentially might what to tell you if it's J, it could be J grade ABC, or it could be glass, or it could be something else. Just feel by the coldness of it. So it's really hard if you have a grade AJ piece already, so you can compare the feeling. But you can compare like different things, like, you know, you can do like metal, right? So it's kind of feel cool. So you can feel the different. So I could feel the difference between the two, even the metal, right? And then this one feel more sharp. So metal is cold, but J is actually a sharper coldness to it. And you can feel like plastic. Plastic is not very cold, right? Or you can feel glass. Glass compared to J, glass is not going to feel that cold compared to J. Yeah? I've been wearing it, so it's kind of warm. But you leave it aside for a little bit, then you can start feeling it. Yeah, this is colder than, than this one that I'm wearing. 
So the four kind of tests you could do is a sound test. And the sound test, if I have some other item, it's going to be easier. But basically, if you have, especially if you have an authentic piece of jade, you can hear how dull it is clanking to metal. Yeah, so this is J earring and J bangle, and I'm not even like hanging it. If you can hang it on a string, and then the sound gonna be more clear. But you could hear, you hear how high pitched this is compared to metal. Yeah, metal is a way lower pitch than this. And then you pretty much can tell between glass and J. And then usually the higher the density the better the quality of the jade, the pitch gonna tend to be higher. So this is plastic, so you can hear the plastic is very dull, yeah? And here the J. Yeah, it's very high pitch. So there you have it. So we talk about lab test, which is the highest, most accurate way to identify grade A J but it would be also expensive, right? And time consuming because most likely you're gonna have to mail it to a lab. You have to send it because you might not be in a city that there is a lab close by. And then we talk about four other tests that you could do the visual inspection and then look at the physical aspect of J. And then we also look at the temperature test and then we look at the sound test. So there you have it. I hope that you are learning something useful in this video. If you like this one, like, share, subscribe. And then uh, let me know in the comment section what topic you want to hear next. Thank you and have a good day. Mahalo.